Why, hello there, people of YouTube. This is Fat Guy with Little Computers here with a little bit of a update video. Um, sort of doing a, just a just a quick box opening. I got a, a nice big box. I got a couple things in it. I got sent in here, uh, and I'm just going to open them up and have a look at it because there are a couple things that are I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on here in a minute. But uh, but for right now. I'm going to start with this little package here, straight from Siberia. No, it's wherever St. Petersburg, Russia is. And it cost a whole 600, uh, whatever the fuck they use. If the Russian moon rooms on it, the whole nine yards. But this was something I came across by chance, and I just happened to win the auction, because there was nobody else bidding on it. And... I just had to have it. So what this is, for those that don't know, let me, let me grab a normal one. Well, even this one isn't normal. But uh, back when SATA was new, people would add SATA ports to their computers through PCI. Um, I just happened to grab this one because it was in the same box as this. But this is a special card that has both USB 2 and SATA. It's for another project that I'm working on with the Macintosh. I only have so many PCI slots. And it harkens back to the very one of the first videos I did. Anyway, so I got to thinking, well, there's enough room. What if I had one that would you can put a hard drive on? You can just take a little, you can take a hard drive. It actually attaches to the card. And you don't have to worry about, you know, hooking a hard drive up. You can just put it into a test system. And give it a shot. So I got the driver disc. You know, I got uh, whatever this is, and what I suspect to be is Japanese. It all looks the same to me. And I, you know. Anyway, but the card itself was a little bit off from what I was expecting. Um, we have the. Sidiclean image SIL3112. It is a very, very common uh, PCI chip. Uh, we have the BIOS for the chip, and then we have a SATA to IDE converter directly on here, which converts to the IDE port for that. This is not exactly what I was planning on, because what I was really hoping for, and I did find um, images of them, so they do exist, where they have a SATA interface, where I could have just taken a hard drive like so, popped it on, but no, this is an IDE. I do have a converter on the way, I don't know how well it will work, because it will end up probably just popping it out like this, and I'll have to, you know, glue it on there, but this is only for the external part, because you're going to have an external SATA. So if you have an external drive, there you go. But again, I got... I don't happen to actually happen to have any loose ones. IDE is in the moment. So, sad day. Because... Uh, I had originally tend to drop one of my old SSDs onto it. Just like so. Anyway. Once I get the adapter, I'll make a video on this part in detail. And I got a couple, a whole bunch of uh, Pentium Pro hardware I wanted to test, and I wanted to use this as a test bed. So I can just slap the card in, turn the machine on, and go. Uh, worst case scenario, I just get a compact flash to IDE converter and pop that on, but, you know. This, this is, the originally I got this because, well, it was 8 bucks, too, because I can just slap it in and go. Moving on. So in my, I want to say, the word is actually hubris. Uh, in my hubris, I started to upgrade parts of my network here to 10 gig. And, well, you can't have old computers not on 10 gig when you have the option. So I picked this up pretty cheap. It is PCI X133, and it comes out to a single 10 gigabit fiber port. So all I need is a, uh, a fiber adapter on the other end, 
and I can drop this into a project that I have coming and I will have 10 gig Ethernet in a old system. I'm not sure which one yet. Well, I am sure which one I'm going to try at least, at the very least, but I'm not ready to offer up anything more than it's going to be on a motherboard that I've already shown you in one of my old earlier videos. This should be enough. I got this in a, a little bit ago, but I have not been able to work on it yet. Um, is Let's turn this around. A WT70-EC motherboard. Um, the name of the company escapes me at the moment. I'll probably put it in the doobly doo at the bottom. Uh, but it's got a couple of nasty crappy craps. Nasty crappy caps. But I don't have any socket 423 motherboards. So this is my first one. I only got a couple processors and I have no idea if they work. But you gotta start somewhere and I've always wanted to play with 423, and I like RAM bus RAM, and so it's going to, it's on a back burner for the moment, but when I get my big order to so mouse her for caps, get this, whatever this box is. All right, healthy living delivered. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so... We got a lovely little Microsoft mouse, and AT adapter, and a key, and PS2 adapters to serial. And this is all nice and lovingly packaged. Ah, black IBM mouse, and a nice little baggie. Ooh. You'd be surprised how, you know, just the little things you know, make you happy. Tick, ticky, ticky. Alright. This looks like we got another one. Okay, we also have another Navy and Mouse. If you catch a theme on here, let me know. Nothing, you know, if I'm doing a... This one is clean as hell. It is practically new. But I got three buttons on PS2. So this would probably go well with, an, with one of the Model 95s that I have. If you can... It's not that bad in the hand. It's a bit small, but, you know. So are all mice for my hands. We've got one of the IBM Dove Bars. Now this definitely goes with the IBM PS2s that I have. Uh, you know, I know mice aren't that interesting, but they are important. Wow. If you catch it just underneath the light, you can see where several... That is a lot of wear right there. <laughs> so this mouse has some mileage on her. Oh, they're right here, too. Right where somebody's been. So is there on here? Yep, more mileage work. Oh, so this is nice and... But it is nice and clean, and that's... I don't miss this at all. I do not miss the balls. Um, phrasing. Anyway, I do not miss ball mice. Oh god, I had to clean it so often. Oh, it just... All of a sudden, your game stops working, you die in Quake 3. Why did you die in Quake 3? Because you couldn't turn fast enough. Why couldn't you turn fast enough? Because your mouse stuck. Now, at first glance, when I... You know, he sent this to me, it didn't look like an IBM mouse. It, it looked like some cheap... Chinese knockoff, but it really does have it on there. Hopefully I'm not too much glare. You know, it's it's got the same texture, but it's definitely you know, I would have thought they would have had an IBM logo somewhere on the top. I don't know why not. But I got one. Card. Never can have too many network cards. Well, I guess you could. Uh, this is one, looks like a 10 megabit one. No idea who made it. Um, 
a lot of these are worth keeping around, not because you really need them, but because they have uh, sockets on them. And sometimes you might need them for, you know, having a boot ROM, if you want to boot off some. Uh, the XT IDE uses something like this if you have a ISA network card. So I will add this to my collection. And this week's side, we got a box of... There it goes. A box of diskettes. I like these plastic boxes. There you go. Or maybe it's like this. Yeah. Either way, looks like oh, new old stock. Some of them use the labels. What? Ah. Oh. Well, well, at least I still have the the right protect ones. Ooh, styrofoam. Not the squeaky kind. Ta da! Just a one point. Looks like it's a one point two. It seems new enough, but you never can have too many of these. You know they don't make them in like this. So damn clean. Oh, that's the top. We got ourselves a keyboard. Ta da! Not a little bit newer. Uh, from 1997, you know, a little bit of yellowing, but that's normal. But these are, you know, even though they're rubber domes, they're still nice little keyboards to use. You know, it's great for, oh, I just need to grab something and test it, because it's still, it's still sturdy, it doesn't flex, you know, but, you know, it's still a good keyboard. Even, you know, rubber domes, oh well. But, it's got IBM written on it, and that's all I need. I don't think they kept this frozen. So, um, I know there are a whole bunch of these on sale right now on eBay. They look pretty average, they look boring, nothing to them. But these are little 10100 uh, Intel network cards. They have the boot ROM, and they have Wake on LAN. So, and that doesn't sound like much, but it actually kind of, it's a little nice. You can actually set up a server, or a little computer somewhere, with a... Uh, the boot P, I think it's called, and you can you don't even need a hard disk in a lot of these older computers. You can just boot to something straight off, and this is actually going to be Plan B for me because um, I have a NAS already. But what I'd like to do is maybe set up something where I can just drop a network card like this in it, uh, plug the network card in. This is obviously if that SATA drive doesn't work, and just boot off a network. You know, I don't need anything fancy on some of these old machines, if I'm just testing them. If it boots up to the image of the Ultimate boot, DOS boot CD, where it can mem check and all this other stuff, it can boot to that. That's perfect, you know? I don't have to worry about disks or viruses or anything like that. Wake Online is also handy if you happen to have a computer that, well, at least at the time, I think they still have it in the newer ones, but, well, you will actually, you can send this network card a signal, and as long as there's enough power in the system, it will boot the system. When I say that, that's what the plus 5 volt standby is for on power supplies. So as long as you have that, it'll pop up a system. I think they still have that in normal ones, boot from land. And those are new. New and shiny. You know, these little Intel heat sinks for socket 7 or 370 whichever have you. Actually, I actually have a couple boards that these will go nice on because they're nice and narrow. I have a dual Pentium 200 that these will fit on nicely where you can't put on some of the other coolers because the processors are too close together. Uh, it's a tie-in board if I remember correctly. So these look brand new and they are nice and shiny and I will add them to my collection. Well, this is something that wasn't really computer related, but I got it anyway, because I do play around with vacuum tubes a little bit. Um, if you've seen the over there, oh, I'm making a mess. 
but I have a little tube radio over there. Um, and it's on the back burner at the moment. You know, it's just one of those things I'm, I'll get around to doing. But I had an opportunity of picking up one of these voltmeet voltmeters in original box from J.A. Pan. So you know it's good. From Lafayette. So it looks like we have some leads, some very, very, man, we, we get spoiled by the stuff that we have today. And look how nice that is. Yeah, nice, shiny, and clean. Oh, that feels really nice. This has been unmolested by everything. So I you know, I just saw this when it came up and I was like, eh, whatever, you know. But then I start noticing it has uh, voltage ranges on here for 1,000 volts. So that's kind of a good thing for when you're dealing with volt or high voltage uh, tube amps. So I naturally saw the condition of this and picked it up in a heartbeat. Let's, I kind of want to open it and show you the inside real quick. Captain Screws. I haven't seen a date yet on this. Come on, there you go. Uh, uh, damn it. There we go. Ta da! That is untouched. So it is all in there. All kinds of. There's your, your current shunt. It's got some little glass fuses. It's got a relay of sorts. It's got no corrosion on the batteries. It has been unused. As far as I can tell. So it is just a simple, no frills, uh, voltage amp or er, resistance meter. No, it just does voltage. Uh, no, it's it does uh, DC DC volts, DC milliamp. So yeah, no, it's got batteries in it, so it has to do uh, uh, ohms as well. But no, this is going to be you need an analog meter for tube testing and for working with. Uh, old tube equipment, so thank you very much. Now I got one. One of the things, there you go. Put it back together before I lose any screws. When I said you get spoiled by the, the leads that you have today, they're not the silicone ones that we're used to. Um, I'm sure they're going to be, no, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. I'm saying you know, you get used to the silicone leads that you have today, and then you look at these, and it's like, gosh. Man, I'm just going to touch that with my finger when I'm testing these sometime. It is going to happen. I am going to shock the shit out of myself. You know, that is what I mean by you're spoiled by the new leads. Where they're a little bit safer. You know, for you, not necessarily for anything else. But naturally, I saved the good stuff for last. Well... That voltmeter was pretty damn cool. But I got a nice super micro box. It's in a box. That's the way, you know. They do not. Ah, so I got the CD. Um, diskettes for super micro. Processor came with a processor. Eight hundred, eight hundred, one thirty-three. Didn't take that out, and that is, isn't that just a thing of beauty? Oh, battery. 
uh, standardish mostly layout. This looks like a nice little workstation board. Um, SCSI was an option, I did not have it on there. But wait, there's more. Um, all the caps look good. I don't see anything. It does not see any use on this at all. This is the uh, 370 DLE from Supermicro. Um, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head, this is a Talatin capable board. Um, I'll Google it when I, you know, if, uh, if I'm wrong, I'll put it down here in the bottom. So, looks like it has standard on board through Intel and three socket, or two socket 370s. And an Acer. You still have an Acer slot. So this would be, uh, this would not come up on most people's radars for retro computing because there's no AGP slot. And that's kind of the way I like it. Oh, that was a thing of beauty. No, it's it's not to Latin. I see switches or jumper settings down here, and it's not. Well, it is mentioning up to 1200 megahertz, so maybe it is. Anywho. So basically, what I would have done with this board. Oh, I don't know. There we go. I just had it. So, my, what might be a fun project for this board? would be to do some benchmarks of networking and see how well things do. Because there are, there's a reason that Intel is the king of the network cards. There's a reason that their cards are so much more expensive on eBay than any other brand. It's because of compatibility. It's because they are, generally speaking, the most compatible and the fastest. In, or, or near enough, it makes no difference. And their driver support is awesome. You can still get the drivers on their website for that 10100 card I showed you earlier. This is the 10 gigabyte one. Like what you can do with a Pentium 3 and a 10 gigabyte card. You know? I know for a fact that, well, I'm very, very certain this card is so much faster than these CPUs even combined. You'll never get 10 gigabytes out of this on this board. But it'd be fun to see. You know, so that's what an upcoming big project I have is testing out 10 gigabyte networking on a Pentium 3. Because, why the hell not? Nobody else is doing it. But I think this might actually be a dual channel board, or dual memory channel. I know this chipset is probably capable of it in some cases. Oh, that's why I, that's, I forgot this, why he sent it to me. Okay, so... I don't know if I can, you should be able to see it here, yeah. but whoop, whoop, I got a broken tab. That's why. I forgot completely until I saw it. Okay, so I've got to order that part, which is not hard. I've done it. A few. I've already done it for a Pentium Pro, where I've actually desoldered the socket and soldered it back in. That's for another video where I show you what I've done. Um, I... This, this this untreated ADD thing I have is absolutely horrible for that. I can't get fuck all done. Anyway, so that's the plan with this. I gotta desolder this, or I've got to. The plan is at the moment desolder the socket, solder in a new one, so I can have this board working and ready to go. So I guess it has been used because somebody abused it. Poor thing. But you know, that it's just a sweet little board. I'll have a project for this no matter what. So. But, uh, uh, ID cable. So, that yeah, goes back in the bag. So, I want to say thank you to everybody that sent me stuff in the last month or so. This all came in the last couple of weeks, and uh, I, don't know if, I don't think anybody else is sending anything else in the near future, but I will do a video as, as it comes in. Um, those that give you permission to use their names, I would have. I will write it down in the description and in the video, so you've already seen them. But until next time, thanks for watching. This has been Fat Guy with Old Computers.